And Saving Graces, which is such a lovely book, has now come out in paperback, and Elizabeth Edwards is here with us. And good morning. It's great to see you. It's great to see you again. It's been a while. Yeah, it has been too yeah. long. You look great. Thank you. How are you feeling? Uh, I have a lot of energy. I feel great. Mm -hmm. um, the the trail is actually energizing, and uh, my life is a little less complicated now with uh, since we're back home. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's going to get more. It, it is. I, <laughs> it may, I'm it may be less complicated for the moment. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, and, and and you write an extra chapter in the book, which is really great, mm -hmm. talking about uh, the cancer coming back and, and living with the realities of the incurable cancer and your decision to continue it, yeah, your I'd, life's work with this campaign. I'd actually agreed to write the write the uh, chapter before this happened right. and had most of it written, and then of course the diagnosis changed the chapter entirely. So. I had to rewrite it. No new deadline, mind you. But, mm -hmm. but, so, right. So I had to rewrite it quickly. And with this decision to continue on with the campaign, yes. which uh, was analyzed and uh, yes. psychoanalyzed <laughs> it, exactly. uh, by people everywhere, how has that played out for you and with the school-aged kids and your health? How, how has it been? Uh, how has actually, all that you know, balance been? Uh, you know, it's, it's complicated, but so is running for president complicated. You mm -hmm. know, you're, you've got to decide what you're going to do. We we'd pretty much decided to take the kids with us on the road uh, in the fall and homeschool them. And this sort of confirmed that we didn't want to. I didn't want to lose that time with them. Whatever time I've got left, I didn't want to lose that. Mm -hmm. um, so they're gonna. They will be on the road with us. Um, and uh, honestly, thinking about other people's health care problems and health care policy instead of my own mm -hmm. is actually good for me. Really? In yeah. what way? Well, you know, I, I don't sit around feeling sorry for myself. Mm -hmm. um, it gives me purpose. I'm not sort of waiting. You know, uh, feeling, uh, does I, do I hurt here? I got this symptom. And those things are just never, ever on my mind. Uh, instead, I, you know, the stories of other people's problems are. Right. There's this distinct lack of self-pity in but, your book, which, I mean, self-pity can really, really cripple people. But it's amazing with all the things that have happened to you, personal tragedy and your health problems, there's a complete lack of that. Well, I, you know, I, honestly, I see that as I go out, too. And people, uh, honestly, people come up about health problems very, very infrequently their own, usually somebody they care about. Mm -hmm. uh, people, are, you know, I think are pretty good about putting aside their own problems if they see somebody else who's got a bigger problem. It's a little hard yeah. to bellyache, and I see them all the time. Yeah, it really puts things in perspective. It does. I want to talk about the role of, of wives here in the campaign, and you've been very outspoken. We've already been talking about it this morning. Um, Michelle Obama has been in the news for a comment that she made last week um, saying, if you can't run your own family, you can't run the White House. A lot of people took this as a criticism of Hillary Rodham Clinton, and she and her husband have both come out and said, no, that's not true. It was taken out of context. But there are people that feel that because there's a woman running for president, mm -hmm. that it might be up to the wives of the candidates to really come down hard on Hillary Clinton because their husbands can't. It's, a man can't criticize a woman in uh, that way. Well, I mean, what are your I, thoughts on that? Uh, I think if you're talking about policies and, and uh, things like that, that uh, there's no problem in, in, in anyone criticizing or making the distinctions between their policies and, uh, and Senator Clinton's policies. Uh, in fact, I think it's an imperative that you do that. Um, uh, of course, Michelle's on her own <laughs> this one. Right, I got right, my own problem, right, right. So she's, but um, the, uh, uh, but I, I think the distinctions be made by anybody, any the candidates and the surrogates for the candidates, which would include the spouses. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've been very outspoken. You've called a Barack Obama holier than thou in Iraq. Yeah. You, you criticized Hillary Rodham Clinton for failing to show leadership on health care and, mm -hmm. and Iraq. Is this outspokenness something that has increased on your part? I know you say that I've always been this way, but you do seem more front and center this time. Well, I mean, I think it's because I'm front and center, not because I've changed, but because mm -hmm. the coverage of me has changed. Um, I think it's really important to be honest. I, I don't go out of my way to, uh, to complain about anybody else, but if I'm asked a direct question, I try the best I can to answer it, um, uh, particularly if it's, about, uh, if it's about policies, and I think that the things that I was saying had to do with policies, mm -hmm. with Senator Obama's votes for funding of the Iraq war. Very proud of, what, mm -hmm. of his speech that he gave before the, the Iraq war vote, but he has voted for funding, um, and I think just need to be upfront about that. And Senator Clinton, who was great on health care in the 90s, doesn't have a health care policy now. And something outside of policies, there was a comment that you made uh, about your husband. You said, we can't make John black and we can't make him a woman. And uh, people, right. so that, that's that, a that's, comment that... Yeah, now, I, I do hate to use that. It's taken out of context. But mm -hmm. I was talking about the Internet and trying to break through on mainstream media and how when the mainstream media is enamored, and frankly, if I were a journalist, I might be too, with this extremely interesting fight between an African-American and a, and a woman. And it's a little hard to get into, that, in, into the mm -hmm. mix in that, even if you have great policy. And, and, uh, and a lot of support around the country. still hard to get into that mix. So we have turned, because we can't do anything about that 
that dynamic, we've turned uh, to try to communicate directly with people through the internet. And n no offense, not not allow the mainstream media to be a sieve that uh, that blocks John's message. Well, I know that you will continue to be outspoken, and the book, regardless of uh, party affiliation, is lovely and Thank it's you. inspirational. Thank you. And I've gotten a lot of support from Republicans and Democrats um, yes. about the book. Thanks. It's great to see you again. It's really Elizabeth, great to and see you. Continued, uh, continued good health. Thank you. And uh, for the family as well. Thanks, Take Anna. care. Appreciate All right. it. You can read an excerpt from Saving Graces on our website at cbsnews.com.